Well, the you know the people are, I think, being more diligent than ever. They're having their eyes on the skies. They're submitting their footage. And I wanted to get a question to you about some of the footage and the you know the the communication. Excuse me with the with the beings when they show themselves. Are you imploring your people that uh, you give this insight to to have their cameras ready? Because we at Third Basement really love the UFO footage. And if you have any new ones, we sure would like to share. We uh, give credit where it's due. Well, there's some amazing footage up at, up at SeriousDisclosure.com. And I, uh, I don't operate cameras because, you know, I'm great with a defibrillator or a respirator, but don't give me a computer or camera, I'll break it. Um, <laughs> my wife is better at that than I am. But, you know, the truth is, we have um, people who come. Sometimes we have people with, who have great camera abilities, and sometimes we don't. But, uh, for example, I just got back uh, three days ago from an expedition in a remote area of Arizona that we were doing a training for a whole week with people. And we do these a few times a year. If people are interested, they can sign up uh, on our mailing list for free at, at, at our website at seriousdisclosure.com, and we'll notify you when we're going to head out. We're probably going to do a few next year also. And what we had happen on one particular night that's amazing, we're just now getting this, um, is that we had a, 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 an ET object come within a few feet of the group and light up as this beautiful red uh, sphere right by the group, and it's on camera. And then we had, um, this sounds really bizarre to people, we had something that you couldn't see with the naked eye, but out of another dimension, we heard something that sounded like an electronic communication all around the group, and it was several ET voices speaking. And we actually got a, some of that on a digital a surround sound sort of audio digital re uh, recorder. And what's interesting is people were so startled, a couple of people literally leapt out of their chairs and said, what is that? I said, well, they're here. And when that happened a couple years ago up in Joshua Tree National Park, I said, look, there's a spear floating in here. We've heard these electronic voices. And a member of our team, Raven, who was with me at, at Contact in the Desert uh, near Joshua Tree in, in August, took a photo, not a very fancy camera, but it was a 35 millimeter, and had the, the lens open about three or four seconds. And in that picture is uh, an ET that's transdimensionally sort of an, if you can visualize an electronic astral projection, <laughs> but high tech, floating right outside our circle where our chairs are. And we have that photo up on our website, it's, and the whole report is kind of astonishing. And so what people have to realize is that when you're dealing with the real ET phenomenon, you're dealing with something that my uncle was a guy who worked on the lunar module at Northrop Grumman. And uh, I, I recently met with an engineer there, and he says, yeah, we call this PFM, pure frickin' magic. And at the CIA, they call it WSFM, weird science and frickin' magic, where it's this amazing manifestations of interstellar, transdimensional uh, uh, ET technologies and how they manifest. Now, that's very interesting because you mentioned this, this big Purdue. I don't want to name him, but one of the, one of the biggest film producer directors in Hollywood, I mean, someone who's done movies billions of dollars, um, who's, who I've taken out in the desert with me, told me this story of years ago having one of these actual ET objects, very transdimensional, almost translucent. The object itself was intelligent, and this is where you get into where the actual spacecraft has artificial intelligence from the occupants, where the object itself is a nano bio machine that has artificial intelligence to the point that it's conscious. I'm talking about the UFO itself. And he had this experience and he thought, is this really, could this be possible? I said, yes, that's the real ET stuff. Then he told me he was up outside uh, Provo, Utah, where there's a secret underground base that's uh, military. And he saw one of these objects. He was with a film crew, but they didn't get it on film. They did, had it was packed in their trunk and they were driving out to someplace in the Unita Mountains, I think is how you pronounce them, U-N-I-T-A. And this thing's floating along, and it has rivets and seams, and he says, you know, it felt like a man-made machine, but it was silent and floating. I said, yes, of course. I said, we started, we discovered gravity control and started building anti-gravity things at my uncle's old company, Northrop, and which became Northrop Grumman, and Lockheed Martin, and Rand Corporation, and other things back in uh, the 50s. 
And I said, I have a guy who's the senior scientist at the Naval Research Labs, which is the largest Department of Defense Labs uh, in the United States, who was working on some of these things and actually demonstrated this in his hangar there near Washington or in Washington. And he said that he was in, quote, the vault where he found a document where it stated that in October 1954, we achieved gravity control. Well, you know, that's almost... 60 years ago. I mean, we were coming up on the end of 2013. So, you know, what I tell people is that, you know, when you fly on a jet airplane, remember that jet engines were first being developed in the 30s. Rockets were Werner von Braun for Adolf Hitler in the 40s. Nothing since then. Do you really believe that there have been no breakthroughs in energy generation and propulsion for 70 years? This is ridiculous. Of course there has been. Unfortunately, it's all been classified. So here we are destroying the planet. And, you know, having global warming and oil war number X, when these things are sitting in a black box. And that's why one of the reasons I left emergency medicine and my career is that I, I tell people I'm an emergency doctor and I know an emergency when we see one and our planet is in an emergency and no one seems to be attending to this problem properly. And so we're going to have to fix this because the good news is that the solutions are sitting there on a black shelf. The bad news is that you have uh, some ruthless people who, who will do almost anything to keep this secret. So what we're trying to do is create the public awareness and the support so that we can now bring this information out. But also the next phase is beyond just the information, begin a research and development program that is completely civilian and open source where we bring out these energy technologies so we no longer need uh, nuclear power and coal and oil and gas and what have you. You know, the, these governments, are obviously the cabal that's in control, that's what they're hiding from us is because if they don't have the petrodollars, they, they'll lose their power. And that's the sad part. Like you said, these uh, craft with the rivets on them are back engineered, reverse engineered, as you call them, I believe what they are, ARVs, alien reproduction vehicles. Well, not only that, but remember that T. Townsend Brown and the Kolosky Frost experiment, this is also on our website at SeriousDisclosure.com, um, was in the 20s. In the late 20s, T. Townsend Brown was using high-voltage systems and crystalline materials that cause lift and levitation. This is not a myth. And, and so, you know, now we're going back 80-some years. So now they didn't necessarily have entire craft flying around in, in the 20s. But this is not a new technology. It's just that it's always been kept under wraps because whether it was in the 20s or the 50s or now, you have a macroeconomic order run by a handful of plutocrats and what I call them the kleptocracy of the petro-Nazis who are intent on – it's not just money. They have enough money. It's macroeconomic power. It's, it's really the power that tons of money represents. And that's, unfortunately, I call this a sort of an economic slavery that the whole world is trapped in, which is why we're stuck in an energy paradigm and a social paradigm that is from the late 1800s and early 1900s. So in order for us to go forward from where we are, there's going to have to be a lot of people who come forward and courageously do this. And uh, the public needs to understand that instead of just taking this subject and being entertained by it, they need to go and, for example, support. We have a fund where people can contribute so that we can develop an energy research facility with the best people I've met in the last 20 years who actually know this science to bring this information uh, out and to bring the technologies out. I don't think the big corporations and the governments will ever do it, and I don't think that an individual working alone in their basement will be able to do it because they're going to get squashed. We've got to come together as a people and say, let's do this together. Without mentioning uh, the exact filmmaker's name, I just want to throw some out there. George Lucas, Steven Spielberg, James Cameron, Peter Jackson, Michael Bay were, were uh, out of the ones that I just mentioned, was it uh, one of those that showed up with you and that was uh, describing the... You know, the I, don't want, I don't want to make a guessing game out of this because I don't breach confidentiality and it's a, a process of elimination, but I'll just tell you, it's a very prominent filmmaker that has done a lot of movies that anyone... Okay. And when I mention the name of the films, they would know what they are. But the, the point I'm making is that there are a lot of people who know that this is real, but they don't know what to do about it. In fact, this gentleman 
wanted to do a film with me and had a CIA guy and a former Department of Energy director approach him. And so that's why we ended up crowdfunding this film, Sirius. And it ended up being the, the most successful crowdfunded documentary in the history of crowdfunding. And it's now viewable. You can go, I think it's you know, like for $4.99. There's, we have a hosting company that's hosting it. And you can see it online at Video On Demand from our website at SeriousDisclosure.com. So, you know, and it's also available by DVD. And we have some people now looking into actually doing something with broadcasting it. So I think that's what's exciting is that all everything we've done has been lots of people putting their shoulder to the wheel, uh, even when the big Hollywood moguls and the big media people get kind of intimidated. Then now in this day and age with the new medium, like what you guys are doing, we don't need them. I mean, we, let's just go forward without them.